Let's talk about rationalizing the denominator by going over a easy example as well as a hard example. Okay, so when we're rationalizing the denominator, our main goal here with dealing with radicals is to get the radical off the denominator. A lot of times, especially like in trig, we like to have it rewritten in a certain format and rationalizing the denominator is a very important process for doing that. Depending on the instructions that you might get for a test or a quiz, it might ask for a simplified answer and they might expect that we don't want a radical in the denominator. We don't want to divide by irrational number. So we need to get rid of it. Now we need to understand how are we going to get rid of the square root? Well, the easy way to get rid of a square root is to find a number that you can take the square root of. The square root of nine is simply going to be three. So it's like, all right, well, let's identify, we can't take the square root of three, but how can we maybe multiply three to be able to get it to be nine, so therefore we can take the square root of it and then it's done. Well, we simply just can't multiply a three times the square root of three because our rules of radicals state that if we're going to multiply inside of a radical, we have to have the index be exactly the same, meaning they both need to be the square root and our radicand needs to be exactly the same. So if I had the square root of x times the square root of x, I could rewrite that as the square root of x times x. So if I need to multiply this three under the radical, I need to multiply it by the square root of three in the denominator. But it's also important to remember, we can't just randomly multiply the denominator by the square root of three because then we're not gonna have the same fraction. If I had one over two, as long as I multiply by a four in the numerator and the denominator, I'm gonna produce what we call an equivalent fraction. So if I'm gonna multiply a square root of three in the denominator, I have to make sure I multiply a square root of three in the numerator. Now I can multiply straight across and you can see I'm going to obtain the square root of three. And then over here, this is going to be the square root of three times three, which is the square root of nine, which you can see is going to be three. With a little practice, a lot of these easy ones you can do rather quickly and rather fast. Now let's go and get over to a hard one, which once you kind of learn it and once you see it, it's really not that bad, but one of the quick, easy mistakes that students will do is they say, well, I understand this, this is kind of basic, so why don't I just multiply this by the square root of three as well? That makes sense, that's gonna get rid of this radical. The problem here is over here you just had a single term. Here we have two terms that are separated by addition, and over here we have two terms separated by subtraction. If you're multiplying the denominator and they're separated by two terms, you have to make sure you multiply that square root of three times both of them. You just can't multiply, you just can't like pick and choose. You have to make sure you multiply both of the terms times the square root of three. So that produces our problem because even though square root of three times square root of three is going to be the square root of nine, which gets rid of this radical, it produces another radical when I multiply it by three. So in our goal of eliminating our radicals in the denominator, just multiplying by a square root of three does not do it. Now you might be thinking, all right, that kind of makes sense. So then what do you need to multiply by to get rid of that radical. Well, that comes into understanding what is the conjugate and what is that going to produce for our problem. So that can simply be understood by knowing your difference of two squares. If I have a plus b and I multiply by that by the conjugate, which would be an a minus b, I'm going to produce the difference of two squares, a squared minus a b squared. Now you might say, okay, yeah, I remember that from quadratics, but why is that important over here? Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, like what is so important about obtaining something squared. If I have square root of x squared, what does that tell me? We know that the squaring and the square root are what we call inverse operations, right? Or you could think about it, you know, x squared, square root of x squared, either way, they're gonna be inverse operations of each other. So let's go into input here, this denominator, see what I'm talking about. So if I have three times the square root of three, and then three minus the square root of three, well, I look at my first term, a, and that's going to be a three squared. And then I look at my second term, which is going to be a square root of three. So it's gonna be minus square root of three squared. Again, the square root of something squared is just going to be your term three. So now what I'm gonna get is a nine minus a three, which equals a six. I no longer have a value of a radical in my denominator. So I'm gonna need to multiply a three minus a square root of three. That's what I need to multiply in the denominator. And just like I showed over here, whatever you do in the denominator, you have to be able to do in the numerator. And again, I like to use my parentheses to make sure I don't make the mistake and I make sure I distribute. So down here, we have the difference of two squares. Over here, we have what we call what's going to produce a perfect square trinomial because you have the exact same expression multiplied by itself, which would be like a binomial squared. So you can multiply this out if it gets a little confusing. You can also use your understanding of perfect square trinomials 
to figure out what the correct answer would be. But I will recommend sometimes when you're dealing with radicals, since this can will sometimes simplify, it is sometimes helpful just to write things out from there. But if you wanna know the form here, if you have a perfect square trinomial, that's going to be an a squared minus 2ab plus a b squared. That would be the formula just like your a squared minus b squared. So that'd be if you have a minus b quantity squared. Some students remember it, some don't. I don't think it's that important for you guys to have that memorized. But let's do three times three, it's going to be nine. Three times negative three is going to be a, let's see, positive, no, that's a negative. So this would be a negative three, square root of three. This is a negative three, square root of three. And then this is going to be a positive square root of three squared, right? And so you can see how I have my a times on b, and I'm gonna have two of them. So this is going to reduce, if I simplify this, it would be a nine minus a six square root of three, and then plus three. So that is gonna be my new numerator, which nine plus six is going to be a 12. So let's go ahead and rewrite it over here. So I have a 12 minus a six square root of three divided by a six. Now again, we can simplify this one more time. That's why this is a hard one. It just takes a little bit more steps for us to be able to do. Six divides into 12, two times. Six divides into negative six. That'd be a negative one square root of three. And that is going to be our simplified answer. That is that simplified answer.